Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Last time we talked about forces in the magnetic field, more forces in the air gap. Today we want to talk about forces of a magnetic field at a current carrying wires. So we have a wire and we have a current. The current is rushing through this, this wire, say here, this direction, here, with our eye. Yeah, go in this direction. And then we have our magnetic field. Let's say this direction. B. It's a certain direction. This is our magnetic field. In between we have a certain angle alpha. This time I call it alpha. Right? And we heard something about a Lorentz force. Okay, so the Lorentz force F was defined in a certain direction. This is why I do this, this little arrow above, yeah, that there is a charge Q yeah, multiply, multiplied by velocity. And then we had X and B. Okay. That's that's was the Lorentz force. Yeah. What's the name? Lorentz force. Of a magnetic field at a moved charge. What's current? Current is moving charges, right? Current is moving charges. So actually our F equals. And now what's the move charge? It's the current I multiplied by the time t. Huh? That's q. Huh? Coulomb per second multiplied per second is Coulomb. Huh? And then the rest is not affected. Multiplied by v v. Now let's have a look at this. So this is a velocity, this is a time, this is meters per second, this is seconds. If I multiply those two, I have the length. So the length which will the current is traveling in one the length. Yeah? The length of this. Oriented length. So in direction of of the current yeah because i have still this 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 uh, vector so we have our current i then we multiply and then we have our length l in this direction from here to here yeah cross p so as soon as we have a current running through a wire uh, and we have a magnetic field, then there is force. Uh, what was the force again? How what was this X product? The absolute value equals, well, I, there's no absolute value, it's I, then it's the absolute value of L multiplied by the absolute value of B. And then we had this sinus over this angle here. This was this was uh, the 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 formula for this X product. How can we how we can we memorize easier? Let's say, let's see. So here we have our L. Okay? Draw this once again. Here we have our L. This is our L vector from here to here. Right? Then we have our B vector here. This is our B vector. Yeah. 
we had this angle alpha. All right? And now let's have a look. This would be the parallelogram, which is defined by those two. Okay? And now let's have a look at this length here. How much is this length? They call it h, because it's the height of the parallelogram. Yeah? This is the absolute value of b, hmm? multiplied by sinus alpha. Hmm? Sinus alpha. This divided by this is sinus alpha, yeah? because we have here a rectangular triangle. Hmm? So this is just true. And how long is this? This is the absolute value of L. So our area of our par parallelogram yeah, is the is H multiplied by L. And this is L. Actually, it's the absolute value of L. And then we had H multiplied by the absolute value of b multiplied sine alpha. Whee! Whee! It's the same. It's the same. It's just how you calculate the area of a parallelogram opened by those two vectors. Okay? And the, the most I get out if the parallelogram is no par parallelogram but a rectangle. Uh, because then sinus from alpha is 1, and I get the most. And then I multiply with the current strength, and then I have the force. In which direction is the force? The force is in, in this case, we have to turn L, the direction of the current, yeah, into the direction of, of B. Yeah? So actually we are turning like that, and our force would look like that. Here we have our force F. Our force F is rectangular to here and is rectangular to here. Okay? So there is a with these two vectors I have a plane and rectangular to this plane, turning I into B following a right hand helix, yeah, will define the direction of the force. And well, it's the angle between those two vectors yeah, defining an area, and this area is somehow defining how good this force is. If B and I is in the same direction, there is no force at all. Yeah? can be current running billions of amperes, yeah? if this would be possible. Yeah? Doesn't really matter. Yeah? As soon as we got an angle, yeah, the force is getting more. Yeah. So this is forces, forces at current carrying wires. Mm -hmm. What if we don't have only one wire? What if we have more wires than one? Yeah. Let's say we have here wire. Let's say we have here wire. Let's say we have here wire. Yeah. And I want to know, let's say here, current is going inside into the table. Here the current is also going inside into the table and here boop, the current is coming out. One current is coming out. Right? Doesn't really matter how big the currents are. I just want to, to talk about uh, the principle. Right? So let's see. I want to know this, the force produced by this current at this point. Yeah, this current, we only take into account this current, Look at it, looking at here. Yeah. So, let's see, we have here, the direction of the magnetic field is in this direction, right hand helix, yeah. so we would have here a B. That's B caused by this. Yeah. So this is causing... This B here. Alright? And in which direction is the force? I 
is turned into B, so in this direction here is the force. Hmm? This direction is the force. What B would be delivered here in the same direction, but maybe a little bit smaller because it's further away. Yeah? So this will also cause this one. Yeah? And now it's like that. We turn it into whoop. We turn it into fap. So our our force will move in this direction. Here's a force. Of course, here is not only the force from this wire, here is also the force from this wire. And this wire would cause a field going in this direction. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's also going down, yeah. so the force is added in this direction. Yeah. And this is a force going in this direction, so here we would also add here, so by simple superposition, the B and the B of those two of those two uh, currents and tuck. or we can simply add also the forces we can do like it would only be two wires calculate the force then we do the other two wires calculate the force and add those two forces the vectors of the two forces uh, the vectors that's important so this is if you have more than two wires then you have to do again a little superposition and add to vector addition but adding forces in the department of mechanical engineers we are pros right yeah forces at current carrying wires no, that's it and this is actually what Ampere found out huh? this is exactly what we've seen that two wires which have the same direction they will attract each other two wires which have opposite direction they will they will distract each other huh? so will they they and this this is was Ampere's finding simply huh? he have seen experienced the Lorentz force yeah forces at current carrying wires Next time we're going to talk about the magnetic circuit, a sample circuit where we have all parts inside which we need to calculate then other magnetic circuits of, uh, I don't know, electromagnets, electrical machines, stuff like that. Uh, sample magnetic circuit next time. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.